part of equipping the saints to preach and to demonstrate the power of God. What does this good news mean? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use good news, this, this acronym uh, to, to explain to you what is the good news is. Good news G, number one, the good news G starts with God loves us Amen. and created us to be with Him. We were created in the image of God. Good news G stands for God loves man. Let this be, let this take anchor in your heart. Let these words be anchored in your heart. For God created man in his own image, and in the image of God, he created man, male and female. Genesis 1.27. Our sin, G-O, for, you know, for all stands for our sin and our sinfulness are what separated us from God. God loves us. But second, oh, God, sin separates us from God. Romans 3.23 3, 23 to 24 says, For all have sinned and fall short of this glory of God, being justified freely by His grace to the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. The second O stands for, Our sins cannot be taken away by our good works and good deeds or money. No man can save himself. No good deeds, no good works can save a man. It's only Jesus. It's only the gospel. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 4 to 10. You, go, you can read it later. For God was rich in mercy because of His great love which He loved us. Following by D. G-O-O-D. D stands for deliverance and forgiveness of sin. That took place 2,000 years ago as Jesus Christ hung on that bloody cross and rose again on the third day. Colossians chapter 1 verse 13 to 14 says, In Him we have redemption. This is the gospel. News and stands for no one needs to go to hell. No one needs to go to hell. Brian Abonke says his mission, great evangelist, uh, his mission was to plunder hell and to populate heaven. I believe God is putting such a zeal and passion in your heart throughout this series that you will have a, such a, you know, intense fire that you want to see hell being emptied by the preaching of the gospel. No one needs to go to hell. John. Chapter 5, verse 24. Most assuredly, I said to you, he hears my word and believes in him who have sent me as everlasting life. E stands for eternity is real and everyone who repents of their sin and return to Jesus Christ shall be saved and have eternal life. That's found in Romans 9. Whoever confessed their sin, when you confess your sin and believe in your heart, God has raised him up from the dead. You will be saved. Good news. W stands for with Jesus there is internal life. And without Jesus is internal death and destruction. Peter, first, first Peter chapter 3 verse 7 to 9 says, For God so, sorry, John chapter 3 verse 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And finally, S stands for salvation starts the moment you put your faith in Christ Jesus, the Son of God, the one who was born out of virgin, out, born of the Virgin Mary, and repent and follow Him. You can make the choice today. He loves you. He has a plan for your life. Is there anything holding you back from receiving the forgiveness and turning from sin? So start. A relationship with the Lord Jesus. This is good news. Yep. This is the message of the good news. I pray that you will listen to this again. And get it in your spirit. Get it in your heart again and again. What is this gospel? Man is in need of God. Every human being is in need of God. After, after sharing this, how many of you are feeling this excitement in your heart? But once I explain this, how many of you? Can, you, can I see your hand? Yeah. 
Every, how many of you can feel this? Would you say that you are, you know, you're probably more ready now to share the gospel because you just now know the true meaning of the gospel. Yeah. I believe there's a lot of definition. There's a lot of people in different method. But I believe the Holy Spirit is revealing something new to us. What if I told you the more you share the gospel, the more people get saved? What if I told you the more you preach, the more you take ownership of the gospel, as you will take ownership of your phones, as you will take ownership of your bank account, as you will take ownership of your very Facebook, if you will take ownership of this message, what will happen to your friends? I want you to close your eyes right now. Put your hand on your heart. Ask the Holy Spirit for a goal of how many people that you want to share the gospel this week. Sometimes there's a stigma when it comes to numbers and sharing the gospel. But remember that in every number, there is a soul. Every number represents souls. As you said, your goal with the Holy Spirit today, I believe the Holy Spirit is going to empower you to share the gospel. How if you believe that you are the right person, you are the right place at the right time, and you're in front of the right person to share the gospel? Come on, ask the Holy Spirit. Lord, how many people am I supposed to share this week? I believe the Holy Spirit is activating your faith. Amen. Amen. It could be one. It could be two. I went on a journey of sharing at least one soul a day. One soul. When I say sharing the gospel, which we're going to talk about, uh, it's, it could be different. There's ways we can share the gospel. It could be just walking to someone and saying, Jesus loves you. He has an amazing plan for your life. It could be just sharing your story. Can I tell you my story? Look to your friends and say, can I, can I tell you my story? And you begin to share your story of your testimony, how the Lord Jesus changed your life. Your story carries the power to transform somebody's heart. Don't discount your testimonies. I remember my grandma, when my grandma was alive, there was about, sorry, when my grandma was, was dead, when she went to be with the Lord, about 800 people showed up. More than 800 people, people showed up for a funeral. And we wondered why, and we realized that she was sharing a story of a Savior that saved her. Wow. And people came to say, this grandma shared the story. Wow. Everywhere we, we, people came and said, this grandma used to walk in front of my house and shared how Jesus saved her. Your story has power to open people's heart to Jesus. I believe God is breaking shame of sharing your story. Right now, you know, if you're that person, Holy Spirit is breaking shame of sharing the story. Why are you so ashamed? Okay. Never be ashamed of your stories. The seven things that helps you to become be effective in sharing your faith. I want to share quick seven things that helps you. Number one, know your Jesus story. Know your Jesus story. Know that Jesus story. That don't be ashamed of, of the name of Jesus. I believe God is actually putting a fire in the hearts of believers. They're not ashamed of the name of Jesus. It's not going to be awkward anymore. But we are passionately sharing the story of Jesus. Read Acts 29. Paul talked about the death and the resurrection of Jesus. Is Jesus still alive? Then we talk about him. I looked at a waiter in Salt Lake City. I looked at a waiter and said, you have a back pain, don't you? He said, yes. It's been a long time. I've had, I've had, for a long years, I've had this back pain. He looked at me and said, how do, you, how do you know? I told him, I know because Jesus is still alive and his presence at this very moment is right in between us. He died on the cross for you. He wants to take away that pain. He got healed and saved. Know your Jesus. Talk about your Jesus. Number two, 60 seconds of, of gospel. 60 seconds of the gospel. I want you to encourage you. Know how to simply and, clean and uh, simply and clearly articulate the gospel. First, I want to let you know. This is how we go. I want to let you know. There's a God who died on the cross for you. Who are you talking about? Jesus Christ. 2,000 years ago, a man named Jesus died on the cross for you. Because you are a sinner and I'm a sinner. If you, are a, if you, if you, if you murder, you are a murderer. 
If you lie, you are a liar. But we all in the need of a savior. That came in, then, then came a man and God, whose name is Jesus. He died on the cross for, for you. In this moment, in that moment, he looked at you and me and he said, I love you and I love you and I love you. Not only died for you, but today he is alive. If you will put your belief and trust in the Lord, if you will believe in Jesus, you shall be saved. 60 seconds of gospel. The third thing is sowing and reaping. Understand the difference between sowing and reaping. If you don't understand the difference, you can get discouraged. Not everyone we talk to will receive Jesus. There's moments that people have pushed me away. There's a moment like I've had, like people have cursed me. F you, go away. I don't like Jesus. I've had those moments. You know, I have a choice to discourage, get discouraged or not. But I understand the principle of sowing and reaping. I can be sowing the seed of salvation. At times, we are reaping people into the Lord. Don't discount the sowing, but no seeing someone come to the Lord. The message of the gospel will never be wasted. Number four, pray for eyes to be open. Pray that their eyes to be open to see that God loves them. And the second thing, I'll, you know, praying for people, one thing, but also pray God will open your eyes to see who's ready, who's ready to receive Jesus and who's, re who's not. At times you know someone is ready because you will have this, this urging of the Holy Spirit. This person is ready. Next is don't delay. Do it today. Don't delay. Be obedient to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Do what He's telling you to do. You don't have to understand in order to obey. We don't have to understand to, in order to obey. The Bible says go and preach. We just do it. Step out in faith and trust that the Lord will back you up. The Lord will back you up. Sometimes we don't feel it. Some people ask, Johnny, what do you feel when you share the gospel? You, you, so many miracles happen. So many people get encountered with the Lord. What do you feel? Oftentimes I tell the artist, which is my mentor, um, Chris Overstreet taught me this. He said, he said oftentimes we don't feel anything. We don't feel great. We don't feel the anointing. But we obey the word of the Lord. We obey the commission. The great commission is never a great suggestion. It is a great commission to be obeyed. It was not a suggestion. Thing long term. Sometimes it takes time for someone to get born again. It takes time for us to share the truth. Sometimes the Bible says in Jeremiah, the word of God is like an emmer. It, you know, it breaks the bondages it's like an emmer. Sometimes your word goes and come back, goes and come back. You don't see anything happen, but it could be a moment. Suddenly, you feel that person opened their heart to the Lord. Suddenly, think long term. And finally, give permission to yourself for the light of Jesus to shine. Let your life shine bright. Let your life shine bright. When you share with others, live in such a way that your character cannot be questioned because your life reveals the heart and the character of Jesus Christ. Let every part of your life be dead. Be a demonstration of the love and the power of God. God wants to show himself to the world through you. These are some of the ways I want to encourage you to share the gospel. And what am I talking about? All this gospel. It's none other than his son, Jesus Christ. Romans 1-3 says this. Of his son, Paul said this. Concerning his son that was born of the descendant, descendant of David. This is what I'm called to do, to talk about the Son. Everything revolves around Jesus. Everything comes out of Jesus. He's the Son. He's the Son of the living God. He's the Son of God. He's the only begotten Son. He's the Son of the Father. John chapter 3, 16. He's the Son of the Father. The F Jesus came to reveal us this orphan world without a father, without a family. Jesus came to reveal a father that's in love with human beings. We all can get into this family again. We all don't have to be, in, no man could be, have to be in orphan anymore. 
but he can be part of this beautiful family. And this message of the gospel did not start with you and me. That's why the power of the gospel is not in us. It is in the power of the preaching of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the power of the gospel. It, st it didn't start with us. It started from the Father. There's the gospel of the Father. That was manifested in Christ Jesus. The Word became flesh. In the beginning was the Word, and that Word became flesh. He came from the Father. This Word is from the Father. This Gospel is from the Father. It's an incorruptible message. This message cannot be tamed by sin. This message cannot be stopped. For years and years and years, the saints of Jesus has been preaching on this message. This message cannot be stopped because it's from the everlasting Father. And it comes from Jesus. And it's found in Jesus. And this gospel is from the Father. It's unstoppable gospel. For years and years, there's a man and woman that was, they were trying to stop to preach this gospel. There were, there were men and women throughout the history that have been killed for the gospel. They've been tortured for the gospel. They've been celebrated for the gospel. They've been accepted for the gospel. They've been rejected for the gospel. For this one message is unstoppable because it comes from the internal Father. And it's only found, the only good news is good news because of the person of Jesus Christ. All other news, it's not a good news at all. It's only through Jesus the gospel is complete. In Him, Jesus said, I'm, what is this gospel? What do you find in, in Christ? Oftentimes when we preach the gospel, we say, he can, Jesus can give you this, can give you that. He's a blessing. Yes, in, out of him comes blessing. Out of him comes favor. Out of him comes healing. Out of him comes deliverance. These are the benefits. These are the things that you favor and enjoy. This is the, the, the benefits of the cross, benefit of the gospel. But the gospel itself, it's not its benefit. The gospel, it's just his son, which is Jesus Christ. When you give your heart to Jesus, when you give, someone gives their life to Jesus, they are not giving to the benefits of the Son. I'm afraid for years and centuries, the church have reduced the Son into what He can give rather than who He is. Let's bring back, let's talk about the real gospel, the Son who died on the cross. I'm in love with this man who called himself the Son of God. There's a lot of teachers that claim to be God and they're dead and they're gone. But one man that said, I am the way through and life. Whoever comes to me has an everlasting life. And he lives, he died, and he rose again. And he lives today. That is my Jesus. He's the son of God. In Christ, not only as I sin, only you find blessing. In him there is life. In Him there is way. In Him there is resurrection. In Him there is healing. In Him there is restoration. In Christ there is redemption. In Christ there is wholeness of soul, spirit and body. Jesus said, I am a river. In Him we drink. We drink of Him. Jesus said, I'm the bread of love. We, we dine Him. We take part of Him. He is all in all. Like Colossians will say, in Him everything exists. Without Him everything, everything fall, falls apart. He is, fills the heavens. There's only one message in heaven. This is my beloved Son. It's only Jesus all over. You turn here Jesus. You turn there Jesus. You turn back. Everything is filled with His Son. This is Jesus that we get to be in relationship with. Gospel is not just 
the signs and wonder we talk about. I've seen so many miracles and healing. That is just a sign that points to greater reality, which is His Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. The message, the cross, the, the, this message of the cross is of God and found in, in Christ. He's the reconciliation between man and God. The separation that happened, he's, he joins us together. He's the redemption of our past. He rewrites our past. He doesn't remember our sin no more. Hebrews says, God forgives all your sin. He doesn't remember your sin anymore. And the other, other part of the gospel is not only He forgives your sin, He empowers you with His righteousness. You become just like Jesus. You are justified just as if you never sinned. You're justified by faith. When you put your faith in Christ Jesus, you become holy, 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 and blameless before the Father. Redeemed by His blood, the precious blood of Jesus, of the Father in Christ, and finally, by His Holy Spirit. We get to experience this kingdom we can experience the gospel gospel is not just a teaching that goes through your mind and makes you clever it is an experience an encounter with a person that encounters brought by the person of the holy spirit yeah. i wanted to put your hand on your heart right now and let the holy spirit fill you with his love romans 5 says he pour out his love the holy spirit pours out his love on your heart Oh, what a precious Holy Spirit. Oh, what a precious Holy Spirit. Without Him, we can never know Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Holy Spirit. He's not some mystical, some, some cloud, but He's as real as we, as we are. He's a real person. Why don't you take a moment and invite the Holy Spirit into your living room. Say, Holy Spirit, come. I want to have a a pure relationship with you. I see God is sanctifying your emotions. That your emotions can be, can be connected to the person of the Holy Spirit. That all of you, all of emotions is pure and holy because of the person of the Holy Spirit. He's a spirit that, satis that cleanses and sanctifies us. In Jesus' name. By the Holy Spirit. The gospel is a, it's, it's, it's not a work, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a, we, we get all this by one thing, by the grace of the Father. We don't deserve, man don't deserve this love, redemption and forgiveness and blessing and, and this communion with the Son, communion with the Father. However, whatever, you know, Jesus made available through His grace, when we put our trust by faith in Him, in His grace, we become righteous and holy before God. Amen. This is the good news that we proclaim. This is the good news we proclaim. Jesus said, go into the world and preach this precious gospel. The things we have seen of Jesus in our secret place, in our encounter with Him, the things, the, 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 the things we have touched, as First John chapter 1, the disciple wrote it this way, the things we have seen, the things we have touched, the things we have experienced concerning this man, which is called the way of life, we want to make this known to you. This is what preaching the gospel is. We are making people known to a Savior, the ever life. As I come to the close of our first series, I want to charge you with the voice and, the, and, and, and with the word of Jesus that echoes through the generation. Let it echo into your heart. This very moment, as the precious Savior looked at His disciple and He said this, in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, verse 18, He said, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. If Jesus have all authority, that means someone have lost their authority. 
And Jesus said, go therefore and make disciple of all nations, bapt baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe in all that I commanded you. And behold, behold, my presence is with you. Even to the end of the age, I will be with you. Today is the day of salvation. I charge you today as we come close to our, our cities. I charge you in the name of the Lord to preach the gospel. I charge you, I commission you as the Holy Spirit commissions you to preach the gospel. Put your hand on your heart as I pray. Father, I pray for our eyes to be open, our heart to burn with the love of the Son of God. The way, the truth, the life, the Lion of Judah, the beginning and the end, the risen King, the bright morning star, the Emmanuel, the living Word, the Spirit, the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Jesus, we just look to you tonight. Grip our heart, Lord. Grip our heart for love for you and for this humanity. Help us to step out of our comfort zone and preach the gospel. Touch us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. What an awesome session we just had. We trust you've been blessed today. At the end of every session, we have a simple activation just for you. Here's this week's activation. Read three stories from the Gospels about how Jesus went around healing the sick. And it doesn't just end there. Share the simple Gospel to three of your closest friends. And I strongly believe that through this, many lives will be touched. Once again, thank you so much for joining us. We look forward to having you next week. Until then, my name is Jeff and this is The Gospel Project.